Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. In today's video, we've got some shabby chic with my favorite color of greens and pinks. So let's get started. My first project is a little bench that I thrifted and I believe it probably was for baby dolls. Now it had a lot of different designs on it. So I just started it out by spray painting it with black first so that it would cover those designs real well. Now what I'm doing is I'm going back with Ruxoleum Tate Green, which is a really pretty mossy sage green. And i am already got one coat on it and I'm going over it with the second coat. So after it dries, then I spray it with Rust-Oleum Clear Sealer and make sure that this is also really good and dry. And once I bring it in, then I pull out just one sheet of the IOD transfer called the Botanist. Now this is a really large transfer set. It comes with four 12 by 16 sheets, and there's a lot of script on it. And when you look at the back of the package, they show pictures of putting the entire piece onto some dressers, but I like to always, you know, get the most bang for my bucks when it comes to my transfers. So I tend to cut it up and use the different pieces that I want. So my plan was to cut this really long piece that was going to kind of swirl around the back of this little bench and go down onto the seat of the bench. Now, what I like about IOD transfers is they come with the grid lines. So it makes it really easy to match up later on. And so what I do, instead of having that extra piece kind of hanging down just a little bit and making it hard to transfer, I just go ahead and cut off the part that's gonna go onto the bench and put that over to the side. And I pull that backing off of the transfer and hover over it before I lay it down. And then just go ahead and start pressing it down. Now the transfer sets always come with like a little plastic tool that you rub on the transfer. I like to start at one end and go ahead and start rubbing on it, sometimes pretty hard in the beginning. Um, as you get toward the end, what I like to do is kind of start at the beginning and rub all the way across it, but then I take one corner and then I start going behind that corner and working my way down. And then you can start pulling that plastic up just a little bit at a time and see how I'm just rubbing it on. And then I'll just pull that plastic up a little bit more and a little bit more until I get to the very end. And also remember when you're rubbing it down with that little plastic tool, if you feel it kind of tugging a little bit, a lot of times that means that there's some transfer stuck still on that plastic. So just lay it back down and then rub on that and it will come right off. And then I just work my way all the way around to the bottom. And I just think this is such a pretty transfer. And because it's got so much script on it, you know, you can always save that script for later on to put in different, you know, projects later on. Now, because I did have it, it's a large transfer and that big piece of plastic, I went on and cut it off just so that it would make it easier to handle. And then I started pushing down on the part that was going down the back side of the bench. And I've got this laying down on my table, just on its back. Now, here's the part down at the bottom that I go ahead and start transferring on. And I will tell you, this is not what it looks like at the <laughs> at the end. This was um, one of those projects that became like a struggle bus. And um, so I'll sh tell you about it as we move along. But isn't that just so pretty? And then once you get it all on, then that little plastic piece, you just rub over it and that's called burnishing it. 
So see that pretty little stamp that I put on the bench? Well, that came from the IOD Reverie set that has a lot of angels on it. And it's a big urn with some flowers in it. Well, I did wipe the stamp really well. But unfortunately, some of the ink was on the edge and it transferred on. So I decided that I would kind of paint over that. Well, and that was where the problem, <laughs> problem began. So let me go ahead and walk you through the rest of it. So these are some different pieces of uh, some stamps. And the first one, the middle part comes from the stamp IOD Antiquities. And it's just some script writing and it's just like a little pretty medallion. And then the little two pieces on the side come from that first stamp set that I use called Reverie. Now this is a thin mount that you can get from IOD and it also has grid lines on it. So what I like to do is I like to lay the stamps on my project facing the ink, you know, where you're going to ink it facing down so that it, the part that's going to stick to the thin mount is sticking up and then I lay the thin mount on it. I hope that all that made sense. And then that way it's going to be exactly where I want it to be. And I'm not sure if this is the IOD black ink or the stone gray ink. Um, it's pretty light on the little bench. So possibly it could have been the black ink because the stone gray ink, which is really my favorite, probably would have been too light for this darker bench. And I'm just using a baby wipe to go all around the edges and get that extra ink before I put it down. Okay, so here I am again, cutting off some more transfer. So let me tell you what happened. So when I messed up on that little urn on the seat of the bench, and I got a little bit of ink on it, I didn't want it to stay on there. So I just took a little bit of that paint and painted over it, and it didn't work. Um, it just, it, even though it dried, it was lighter, and it just didn't look right. So then I decided I would paint over just that stamp and I was going to start all, all over again and I was going to blend it really well on the edges. <laughs> and well, that didn't work either. And it was just a hot mess and I just about was ready to give it up. So I let it sit for a day or two because I was mad at myself. And then I just painted over all of it and cut a second piece to go on the bench. And then, and then I was done with it. I I pretty much had it with this, um, but I still love it. I think it's really pretty because it's my favorite color, pink and green. But there for a little bit, I just didn't think it was going to work. So um, rest assured that as crafters, we do mess up sometimes. So what do you think? Now, my next project is a little um, cigar box. It's a little wooden cigar box. Now, the little top part of the box had hinges, but I knew that it would be easier to paint if I just took the hinges off and then I put them back on later. And I'm painting this with Fusion Rose Water Pink paint. And I really like this paint. It's something that I've got a little sample of and I really do like it, but I'm getting just about to the bottom of the little paint sample. Well, and unfortunately, we don't have anybody local that sells that, and I have to order it. And I've got some other pink paints, so I'll just use those up before I get some more. Now, this is the top of the cigar box, and then I go ahead and make sure that I paint the inside of it as well. And by this point, I have put the hinges back onto the top and just used the little screws that went with it. I had just set those off to the side. Now, sometimes when you paint cigar boxes, especially like this, um, you have to be careful of the parts that you paint because um, I'm not sure, it just doesn't always close really well if you put too much paint on it. So I've gotten it all dry and I've sprayed it with Rust-Oleum Clear Sealer. And now this transfer, comes from the brocant transfer the iod it's an older transfer but it's a really popular transfer set and this is a 
a transfer of a really pretty um, lady who's kind of got her hands off to the side and I transfer her onto the top. Now the Brocant transfer set is beautiful. It has um, a transfer of the Eiffel Tower and it's got some script and it's a really, really pretty transfer. And um, I've seen a lot of YouTubers use it because it is extremely popular. Now, once I get the transfer all on, I use that plastic to go over and rub all over it, and that's called burnishing it. Now, I'm making some clay molds from the IOD Classic Elements mold. And what I'm using, DOS Air Dry Clay, and I just kind of rub some between my hands, and then I push it down with my thumb, and then... I'm just using that little plastic tool to scrape around the top of it to make it flat. And I'm using tight bond, thick and quick. And I put it all over on the back. And my intentions are to take several of those little strips and I'm just going to use it as like a little frame around this little girl. Now, I know that that glue is in a little container, but sometimes with the thick and quick, um, when you put it back on and you take it off, if you've had it turned upside down, you know, because the, the glue is getting kind of low, then sometimes it squirts out really fast. So I like to have some in a little container um, and just keep it in that. That way I don't feel like I'm wasting it. And then I have to kind of piece it together a little bit. And what happens when you piece those little pieces together and it dries, sometimes it will leave like a little um, crack in it or a little part where the two pieces don't meet. And then I'm going to go back and just add a little bit of glue to where those all those pieces are connected. And when it's, you know, I get to the place where it's just a little bit too long, and because it's air dry clay, you know, I can just use that little credit card or a little tool, metal tool to kind of cut it off real easy. Now, if you use hot glue, that is something that you can just cut off, you know, with some scissors. Now, if I did this with resin, it would not be as easy to mold this. Now, in where all those little pieces connected, I just take a little bit of clay, kind of rub it between my fingers, and I just kind of put that in real easy and kind of rub over the clay just a little bit to, to try to make it all blend together. Now, yes, when it gets all finished, you can see it just a little bit, but I'd rather see it with that little teeny spot as opposed to having those cracks in it. And then once it gets all dry, then I go back with the fusion paint and I paint that trim. Now, I probably should have painted it first and that would have helped with the cracking. But when I did that, I was working on another project and well, probably a gazillion projects. And I had just set that off to the side. And then I just go really easy, but on the outsides, but on the inside, I use like a really tiny little brush because I don't want to accidentally paint over that transfer. And here's the finished product. So what do you think? I just think she's so pretty. Um, I have a great niece um, that has the same facial features that this little girl does. So when I look at it, I think it of my little, Grace, my little great niece, Anna, and she's such a sweet little girl. Now, my last piece is one of those little, I guess, houses that you'll find at the Dollar Tree. Um, and this was also one of the ones that um, it went through several, <laughs> it went through several phases before I could get it to where I wanted it to be. So I ended up painting it with Waverly's Moss paint, green paint. And then I laid it over on this rice paper. And it is a, I think it's ITD collection and I'll it's just I got it from decoupage paper um and I'll share that link with it down in the description box below and so I lay it the little house on 
top of that trans on that rice paper and then I kind of trace over it and then I cut it. Now, what I should have done on the inside of that house where I was getting ready to put the transfer, I should have painted that white, but well, I forgot. So I'm taking this rice paper and I'm painting it with some white. And what that d does is it makes it easier for that transfer to not kind of blend into the background. Now, because I laid that rice paper down and used a pencil, then it was going to be just a little bit bigger. So this is just a little tool that I've used in the past, and it's got not a really sharp point on it, but enough to where it kind of makes those creases, and I can go back and trim those off. And then I'll be gluing it down with pen art, um, decoupage varnish, and glue. Now, I don't have footage of this little frame that I am putting on it, but this is one of the frame molds that come from IOD, and this is some decoupage paper that has a pretty little girl on it. So this one is made, I believe I made this one from hot glue, and I painted it white, and I just glued on that little decoupage paper, and I got that decoupage paper paper from decoupage central and so um, now what i'm using is some gold rubbing to go all around the edges now i want to put this on the inside of the little house but i want to raise it up and this is one of those little jinka blocks that you get at the dollar tree and i'm painting it white which is not really completely necessary but just in case um, somebody sees it and notices that it's raw, raw, raw wood. Wow, that was really hard to say. Um, I didn't want them to see that, so I painted it white just in case. And then I glued that little Jenga block on, and then I glued the little frame on top of that. Now, this little mold that I'm using comes with Redesign with Prima, and the name of it is called Sharon. And really, all it is, it's these little blocks that you could put together if you wanted to make something that looked like a little brick wall. It would just be different pieces. But when I saw it, I thought, well, this would be perfect to make little signs out of. And I mix it up with resin, which is part A and part B. And when you um, stir it up, doesn't take very long to stir it up. It turns clear. And then you, I poured it it into all these different molds until I ran out and then you let it set up and in about 10 minutes it's done and so I just go ahead and use up all of that resin so I have several different pieces of it and I'll just kind of put those off to the side but this is this redesign with Prima this one comes from Micah Daughters and so this is a stamp that I got at Hobby Lobby and I'm stamping it on a white napkin, and it is. it says, She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. And that verse comes from Proverbs. So I stamped that onto a white napkin, and then I glued it on to one of those little blocks. And when it was dry, then I went back with my finger sander. Now, next... I used my tight bond thick and quick. This time it was still in the bottle. And I'm just gonna put that on the outside of the house down at the bottom. And I just think it's so pretty. And I just go ahead and all of those little pieces have been glued on and I just kind of lay it flat and let it dry overnight. And this is what it looks like. And this may be my favorite piece today. I really like this scripture verse. It reminds me so much of my sister um, because she um, has such a strong spirit and she, um, she's been through a lot of trials and she um, still just walks with grace and dignity. And I'm just so incredibly lucky to have such a wonderful sister. So what do you think? So I tried to kind of show you the side of it so you could see that you really can't see that little Jenga block. So here's all of my pieces today. 
Now, this little bench can be used for a lot of different things. It can be used for a riser, and these are some little pink bottle brush trees that I got off of Amazon that can kind of go with it. So this could even be used at Christmas time if you wanted to, especially if you like pink at Christmas time. And here's my little cigar box, and then my little house with my little sign up at the top. So in the comments below today, tell me what was your favorite and tell me, are, are there times sometimes that you ride on that same struggle bus when you are crafting? Um, this particular video, I was on that bus se several times. And so um, I'm just glad that all of those pieces are finished and they are going to be ready to go to my vendor booth. So friends, thank you so much for watching today's video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications button so you'll be notified when I upload my next video. Have a great week.